Okay. Okay. It's off now. Okay. Hey everyone, Jedi Joy here from the Jedi Joy Show. It is day 30 of the Vegas Showdown. So, craziness is that, um, I guess California is reopening everything, but Governor Sisolak is still being super stubborn here. Which is crazy because I guess the mayor here, Mayor Carolyn Goodman, is really arguing with um, the governor about this because this is crazy. He is like, oh no, we're sticking with it. And then he might even like tack on more days. So I don't know what is going on with him. He has lost his mind because he the whole time he's allowed the Raiders Stadium to still be continue to build in all construction. So you can't tell me he was caring about the safety of the people. There's, there's, you can't tell me that because if he did, he would have shut down all construction. So this is 100% a political move. And Governor Sislug has taken it to the extreme. He obviously uh, is one of the big governors that's trying to either become vice president or just wants to be in really good with whoever becomes president. So he's doing all of these things saying, I'm going to be the one that took the best measures uh, take down Trump because this is a political stunt against Trump. If you guys have not realized that, you really need to wake up because you can see what's going on. Less than uh, the normal flu virus of people have died. We have a, a flu virus that comes around every year that kills 50,000 people in the U.S., 650,000 worldwide. This virus has killed less than that. And it's funny, now they're not even really saying the numbers anymore because th they're not having the number of deaths they want. They wanted it to be more deaths. You say, oh, yeah, right. No, they wanted it to be. They wanted it to be this crazy thing. They're, they're, they're upset that the numbers are not coming in like they wanted because then now everyone's going to realize that we shut down the whole world for a normal flu virus. A normal flu virus. Um, the numbers are not any more than the normal flu virus. And you say, oh, because we did all this quarantine. <laughs> For one thing, we did not quarantine very well. What we did is like, we told some people not to go to work, other people to go to work, but have the same delivery people delivering to everyone. So they're interacting with everyone. So if it really was going to spread, everyone would have got it with the delivery drivers. And then we're all going to the same grocery stores too and packed in like sardines there. They just recently started doing the six feet rule. But here's the deal. It wasn't ever a deadly virus because even people that were getting it were recovering. You have Rita Wilson and Tom Hanks, she's now talking about it and stuff and talking about her experience. She's all dramatizing it, but she's singing rap songs. She's feeling fine. She's like either in her 60s or close to that, so either late 50s, just I don't know her exact age, I never looked it up, but um, late 50s to early 60s. and. She got the virus, um, I think it was back in uh, February, March, and her and Tom Hanks, and they both recovered. And now she's singing uh, rap songs with, uh, you know, Naughty by Nature, and she teamed up with them. You can check out her Twitter. She just had the coronavirus. So it is not a deadly virus. What it is, is it kills people that always die from the flu virus, so people that were already sick, that have low immune deficiencies. Those are the people that always die from the flu virus, and the very sick elderly, not even just the elderly, they were acting like it was just elderly, it was the very sick elderly, who were, excuse me, <coughs> did a bong head just a little bit before here, so I get the aftermath cost, um, the very sick elderly, so if you're a healthy elderly person, then you'd be fine, and it's been that way the whole time, they've always had it be that the numbers of recovery were higher than the numbers of deaths, but people didn't want to pay attention to those numbers for some reason. They wanted to focus on the number of people that were affected instead of looking at the number of people that recovered. And the people that recovered has always been astronomically higher than the people that have died during this whole thing. Like, it's hundreds of thousands that have recovered. Um, and only somebody has a question. They would like to know how is the, uh, is the virus going to, Jay is asking how, Jay Baller, is asking how Jay what? Jay Bala, Bala. is asking how is the uh, the shutdown of all the hotels affecting the Raider Stadium? Oh, okay. So that's the big thing that I've been talking about that proves that Governor Sisolak uh, that this is a political stunt because 
what De Governor Sisolak has been involved in this Raiders stadium since the beginning. He's kind of been like the the guy that kind of put it together. He kind of takes the credit for that. Um, and he became governor. We, they were knowing about the stadium the whole time, so it was kind of like his thing as he became governor because he just recently became governor. I, now I'm almost wishing we had the other Dumbo. I don't know. They're all about the same. But anyways, um, I don't know if the other guy would have done this because he... See, this is Democrats are taking it to this level more than the Republicans because they're wanting to take Trump out of office. But anyways, back to what you were asking about the Raiders Stadium. So during this whole process, Governor Sisolak allowed the Raiders Stadium to continue as normal, full full work crew. Um, uh, up until just recently, they started having a little bit of rules of like six feet apart, but that was just like uh, within the last week. But they had two workers test positive on the site for the coronavirus, and they continued work as normal because he wanted that stadium to be built. And they have had nightmare after nightmare with that stadium. You guys who don't know, most people, because uh, the news kept it so hush hush, but me and Jedi Rich have been following that stadium since the day they put the first sign that said, um, I think it said, the Raiders are coming or something. It was, we have a photo. Uh, on there, I think it's on YouTube somewhere, and, and I'm standing in front of it, and that was like the, the first day that they decided it was going to be on that plot, but we were following before even when they were going back and forth where it was going to be, but so we've been, and we go, we would go out, we used to go out there about every couple of days because we lived close enough to where we'd walk, so we have seen so many things going wrong with the stadium, and we've, we've uh, spoke out about it, and people have called us fake news so many times, but we heard the things directly from the workers. When we would go down to the stadium, we would talk to the workers, and the workers don't mind telling the truth. Uh, they didn't know they needed to lie about things. Like, the one thing they told us, we talked to an iron worker, and they said that they put um, together half of the trusses incorrectly that they put one piece upside down, which didn't seem like a big deal until they got to the end and realized they were like, um, uh, I think it was like quarter inch off plumb. And so then they had to, they were supposed to take down the trusses and redo them, but they didn't want the public to know or anyone to know, so they retrofitted them in the air. Um, and they tried to fix all the trusses while they were already mounted. And then some of them they hadn't, done so they fixed the ones that like seriously huh you guys said uh, Ray, uh jay says seriously yeah this all happened back in june of uh what would we, what are we into so that was june 2019 or 20 2019 or 18 now gosh mother month average was that now 2019 or 18 that that whole thing happened was this this last year gosh it's all blurring together now it's all so much has happened but it was either 2018 or 2019 um in june and we made a huge stink and then we got caught oh my gosh you guys the worst stuff happened to us like um people started coming at us uh, all uh, from all different places on social media and even in person did we got attacked it was a mess just because we spoke out against the raiders stadium it was very crazy and jerry rich ended up in the hospital it was this was had to have been 2018 now i can't remember i'm really bad with years but um so we were living over there and then we moved over here but get this, <clears throat> we moved here because of that, because we weren't safe in our old apartments. We got attacked twice, and it was, and people were threatening us and stuff just because we were saying that the Raiders Stadium was delayed, and we got that much throwback. Ridiculous. And it was delayed. They 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 ended up being at that a couple months later. They ended up being 130 million. Uh, or 130,000 over budget. 130 million. 130 million, that's right. Yeah, not 30,000. Sorry, sometimes when you say it, you go, wait, that's not right. And they go, no, no, it's not 130,000 either. Yeah, 130 million over budget because it's a, it was going to be, the original projection for the stadium was going to be $2.3 billion. They wanted to try to make it uh, cheaper, so they got Morton Sin McCarthy, who is the construction company. It's it's two companies. They're, they're very famous around the world. Morton Sin. And then you have McCarthy. This one's done by Mortensen and McCarthy. They came together to do this project. Um, and I totally lost my train of thought for a second of what I was just talking about. But, um, oh yeah, $2.3 billion was the original project projections. Mortensen and McCarthy came in. I was I was talking to people, because I talked to everyone, if you guys you know, I won't get into all the details all right now about my job, but I've, I talked to everyone. So during the time 
that before the stadium was being built, there was all of these people coming in for bids from all over the U.S. to bid to get to be the one to build the stadium before they chose Martin St. McCarthy. You had the opportunity to bid because everyone wanted to be a part of this for all of the projects during the stadium. And uh, Morris and McCarthy said they could do it for $1.8 billion. So they got the deal because they're cheap here in Vegas and they wanted the best deal. And they try to cut corners all the time. Well, now we're back up to over $2 billion because of all of the overages and the mistakes that they've done. So because of that trust thing that we I was talking about, well, everyone called us fake news, liars. We got attacked and people outed me on social media. So that's why now I just tell you guys um, that I'm... Jedi Joy and Chelsea Vegas because they were the ones that outed me to everyone, um, which you know affects my business because not everyone necessarily wants to know all my personal life. However, you know? here's, a, here's a good point. There's a lot of people who act like they know what's going on in Vegas. I mean, unless you're someone like Scott Robin who's actually talking to the fucking heads, you know, people in this town. Everyone else is just watching and guessing, and we have people from other bloggers that are just telling all this stuff. They moved here in 2014. They're from Canada. Yeah, you're an escort, but you hear everything that goes on in this town. I do, and here's the thing. So, so um, we had spoke out about that dress, and we got so much back. And you guys, I'm going to say now, because it probably don't matter, but we get in deep to where we have been on the Raiders Stadium site. We got permission. We were escorted personally on the Raiders Stadium site in the very beginning. We have tons of footage. We've kept a lot of it secretive in just to protect our source who took us on the stadium. So uh, we hear firsthand everything. We were on there before any of these newscasters ever got to go uh, a step foot. They just recently started going. So we were there. They were on the groundwork. We have all the footage. One day we might put it up, but um, we didn't want to get the person in trouble who took us on there. But this person felt that we... Uh, he called us up from YouTube, and he's like, I want you guys to come on the side. I think you guys are the coolest bloggers, and ch come check it out. So we went on there. For that matter, we got Resort World. And then Resort World, same thing. So then I get a call about Resort World. After this, the guy says, I am the inspector on Resort World. Would you guys like a personal tour of Resort World? I said, of course. So we go there. Well, the personal tour turned out to be he didn't get permission for that and was just going to sneak us on there, which we didn't know. So then security calls cops on us. <sighs> and, well, luckily they were going to call the cops. And then they, they stop and they realize it was their inspector because they see they thought we were on there. you know. And then they realize it's the inspector brought us on there. So he ended up losing his job. Nothing happened to us. It wasn't our fault. We were. He said, yeah, I brought them on here. And they're like, why? You're not allowed to do that. So he ended up getting fired, but we have all the footage of that, and we posted that, and then Gentry, who bought, who owns the resort world, they're the ones they're from China, they contacted us personally on our website and asked us to take down all of the information that we had got because the inspector told us all kinds of stuff. He told us that China wanted to buy the win in Encore. That's why they um, painted their colors exactly the same. So if you guys know, there ended up being a lawsuit, wind suit, Resort World because they were painting their colors exactly the same as wind. The, it was going to be those brown, like colored uh, windows with the um, cream color. They were painting exactly the same. And wind said, You can't do that. Well, they did it because they knew they were going to buy wind and Encore. That's their plan. Well, now it's going to be cheap as could be for uh, uh, China to buy it up and that was this guy's plan so if you guys don't think this is a political thing for one thing China's the one that first started it and they knew it wasn't a super deadly virus they knew it was a regular flu virus because it is so they knew that and they knew that we would jump on the on it and they're already mad at us for many many reasons like the 25 percent increase in tax from all products coming from China which affects so many small businesses that buy a lot of their products and even if you say oh buy American-made products. Well, most people's American-made products are using products from China to make their American-made products. That you're like, oh, we're assembling it in America, but all of our products, all of our supplies, and the little uh, little thingies, little pieces of here and there all come from China. So now that's been increased 25%, which makes a big difference 
of small businesses prior to the shutdown. Now small business, that had already happened. Now we have the shutdown. Most of them will not make it. And that is very, very unfortunate. That makes me very upset. Jerry Rich lost his small business during the 2008 uh, kind of shutdown of the, not we didn't actually shut down, but the whole economy kind of went in the toilet. You know, the housing market crashed there. Um, his family had had a hardware store and he owned a uh, small, like a market in the condo building that uh, he owned a condo. And then down below, he had like the market that you would go to at the condo building. Like it was um, like the convenient little market there. It was called Tallers because our, like, our last name is Light Taller. But those went down the toilet in 2008. People, you know, tighten their belts. They don't want to spend a little extra for convenience. They'll walk the half mile to Fred Meyer. Uh, the Kroger's up the street. Matthew, um, Matthew Yali is just really just loves what you're doing. I mean, he just needs a shout out. Because what is his name? His name's Matthew. He's but, obsessed with but you. But what's the last name? I don't even know. Oh. It just says Matthew. Hi, Matthew. You know my name was going to be Matthew? I don't think you would have been as obsessed with me, maybe, if that was the case. So I was going to be Matthew. My parents were just convinced I was a boy. Like, there was just no consideration that I was a girl. They just didn't. It was just, no, nope, she's going to be. Because they already had a girl. So I was going to be Matthew, and that was just it. They didn't even consider another name. But I was only 17 minutes of labor. That was it. My dad wasn't even, he had gone to the bathroom or something, and I was born. And so I was a joy to my mom. That's why my name is Joy. There's my little story for you guys. I haven't told that in a long time. I used to tell it all the time, but I don't really go by Joy very much anymore. I either go by Jedi Joy or by Chelsea. Very rarely does anyone just call me Joy anymore. But... Yeah, so that's my why I have joy, but I was going to be Matthew, so there you go, Matthew. Shout out to Matthew. So I'm wearing my, um, so here's the thing. This, I wanted this, this was a present from uh, Amazon Wishlist, but I, I thought, man, I wish they had gotten the black and white one for the Raiders, but I looked at it, they don't even have it, so it was like, your only option was like, the Dallas Cowboy colors, or I think the other one was red and, uh, the chief colors or something. I'm like, because they're just supposed to be kind of like anonymous outfits, but I'm like, hey, they forgot about the Raiders. They didn't have a black and white one or black and silver or whatever. Anyway, so so for all y'all going, why she got a Raiders hat and cowboy colors on? Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> That's the story there. For one thing, I didn't buy this, but I looked and I was like, oh, they didn't even have it in black and white. It wasn't an option. Um, okay, so back to the Raiders stadium. So, they, we've been following it, we obviously, so I, I grew up, I'm, I was a huge football fan growing up, but I was a Niners fan, which that's another thing people want to go, <gasps> how could you be a Niners fan and not be a Raiders fan? <gasps> well, for one thing, I move, and I like Vegas, and um, a lot of things happened, you know, my life changed, my mom killed herself, that's when I didn't take football as seriously, I didn't watch it as much, and then once I came here, I'm like, Raiders are coming here? Cool, I'm not like... One of those, you cannot change teams. I used to be that way, though. I used to be like, oh, Wes, what a traitor. But I find I am a traitor. I don't care. I'm going for the Raiders now because I think, for one thing, th I've been to um, Raiders game. I've only been to two, uh, real, two, two NFL games, and it was funny. It was At the time, I didn't like either of the teams that I went to the games. I went to a, a Seattle Seahawks game, which I hated the Seahawks, but I won free tickets at a bar for, during a, a, a trivia I won a football trivia thing, so they gave me free tickets to go see, because I was living in Portland. They gave me tickets to see the Seahawks, and they play the Cardinals up in Seattle, and it rained. It was just terrible. <laughs> Man, I, those games are terrible. The, the, the tailgating, you're just soaking wet. Yeah, you know, what, real quick. What's going on here? I'm going to put my hair quick. Oh, we're going to put Jerry's hair. Are you going outside? Yeah, I got to go outside for a second. You got so much hair. Mm -hmm. Sorry, guys. Excuse me. Excuse Wait, me. did you want a hat? I'm gonna grab it over here, from up there. Oh, you want me to get it? Are you convinced? Oh, that should be, that should be pretty fun. You want me to get one of the visors? Yeah, grab me the visor and a, and a, and a headband. Do you want black or white? Uh, how about white today? 
Where did your granddad live? Down here. Down here, yeah. Yeah, that one looks good. All right, thank you. Okay, I'll be back in a few. Okay. You guys keep enjoying your conversation with Jedi Joy. She's, she's really fun <coughs> to talk to. Yeah, so into that Seahawks game. Man, what a miserable way to experience yeah. the <laughs> football game and just pouring down rain all the time. People always say, it doesn't rain that much in Seattle or in uh, Portland. Yes, it does. I lived there for a couple years, and people that live there, oh, it's not that much. It rained so much and for so many days and for so many months. And then, yeah, you'll have some months it doesn't. But, man, during those months, it rains a lot. And you're just constantly wet and cold because when you just go outside, you just get so soaked all the time you step outside because it's just pouring down rain for like this will rain for like three months straight and they're like oh i don't like that much I'm like get out of here it rains so much jerry is from portland oregon he was born there but anyway so i went to a seahawks game and then i went to a raiders game and the raiders game turned out to be um my co-workers i worked at a real estate agency they loved the raiders and they were going and i said you know what I'm not a Raiders fan, but any opportunity to go to an NFL game, I'm going. So we road tripped from from actually Vancouver, Washington, down to Oakland. And that was the most fun. Uh, oh, my gosh. I, I just thought this is just the greatest. The tailgating party was insane. Everyone was dressed up in the clothing. I was like, wow, Raiders fans are awesome. I was like, this is so cool. It was such a better experience than up there in Seattle. Oh, gosh. But I've never had the opportunity to go to a Niners game, and I'm actually a Niners fan. But, um, you know, was. But so I then went to the and I thought, wow, this is really cool. And they played uh, the Patriots, and they lost, unfortunately. And I was rooting for the Raiders because I could not stand the Patriots. And I was there, so I was all geared up. My friends gave me all the Raider gear. And I got to meet um, Cliff Branch, which was super cool. And he put his Super Bowl ring on me, and uh, we took photos. And... At the time, you know, uh, I was really excited because, of course, you're, but I didn't even realize the impact until now, and he just recently died. And so it's so cool that I saw those photos, and I just stumbled upon them on Facebook. I forgot because, you know, you change phones, and I had um, all of my photos from until before Jedi Rich, I didn't have an iPhone. So, like, I had pho photos stored on old phones. I don't have all those. Now with the iPhone, you know, you don't ever lose your photos because you keep you to... Every time you get a new phone, you, they just transfer over. But I lost so many photos, but I was so happy for a lot of things. I fortunately uploaded some stuff to Facebook, so then I hadn't been on Facebook in years. I went back and like, oh, cool. So I found that. So I got to meet Cliff Branch. And so Raider Nation has given us a lot of shit because they're like, you're a Niners fan and this and that. Blah, 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 and you can't be a Raiders fan. And you can't be this. And I'm like, okay, whatever. It doesn't matter. I like the Raiders. You can have your opinion about my past so it makes me not a fan but because we were doing the raiders theme song if you guys haven't uh known that so check out jedirich.com we have the raiders theme song I, what we did it's an ice cubes song and it said oakland and all we did was change it to vegas and then we put some edm music so it's it's got a new vibe jedi rich that's what he does he creates music he's kind of like a dj in a sense um uh, but he's a music producer, but it's kind of like if you, if you don't really understand, it's kind of like how the DJs do where you take someone's song and then you add on other things, you layer it. That's what the DJs do. Um, and so, so it's kind of confusing. People get confused. Like it's so and someone's song featuring someone's song, but it's like what the DJs do is they take a song and then they just, you know, mess it all up and stuff and make it something new and add in other stuff. So now it is something new, but it is still that person's song. So you got to give credit to them. So we've reached out to Ice Cube a bunch of times to see you know, if we could get permission to use it. He hasn't responded. He also hasn't responded saying we couldn't. So um, uh, we of course can't get paid on it. it but so anything when that when that music is on like uh, YouTube, you don't get paid for those videos. Not that we're getting paid right now. You can't get paid until you have over a thousand subscribers. We have less than that. Um, but even when you do start getting paid, you usually can't be paid on the ones that have music which is like all of our videos. So we're not really doing social media for money. Of course, in the future, that'd be awesome if we ended up getting paid on the videos that we're already doing. But we, we do it because we love it and we love making art. And uh, we have not really been a, paid a dime from social media unless you count like people 
buying our stuff because they saw us on social media. Like I've been able to sell videos and of course uh, meet people through for my other business through social media, but we have not actually made a dime from any platform like <laughs> Periscope has not paid us, YouTube has not paid us, Twitter has not paid us, you know what I mean? So, and that that's all right. That's So if anything, most of the platforms take us down. <laughs> and then we gotta start over and try to build up our followers again because we're very controversial, as you all can see. Um, from if you've watched any of my blogs, if you even see me sitting here, people, oh, so inappropriate what you're wearing. Whatever, okay. Um, I, I've said in the past, I was very, very insecure growing up. So now that I have confidence, and the reason I have confidence is because of my diet, which I'll get into in a minute. But back to the Raider Stadium. So we had been barking about that the roof trusses were put together improperly. They ended up having to take down one. That's how we found out. They took down one. This is how the whole thing started. They took down a truss. They were cruising along. This was in, I want to say June 2018. I think it's got to be because, it, yeah, it couldn't have been this. Was it just last year? Maybe it was 20. You guys, I'm so bad with you. Maybe it was just last year. I don't know. But um, they, <laughs> they're all blurring together to me now. It's funny. This stadium is just like, because I can't keep track. But they took down the dress and we run out there. We're like, oh my gosh, what's going on? So we start talking to the workers and they say they put it in, put it together incorrectly and they're going to have to redo about half of them. So we thought, oh wow, let's get, be the first to get this news out, not realizing that we were going to be the only ones to ever tell that news and that everyone else was going to deny it, including the local media, and they were going to call us fake news and they were going to call us out. The actual people from Review Journal started calling us names just because we were speaking out about the stadium. Um, like professional journalists were calling us names when we were telling the truth. And it was ridiculous. So then, let's jump forward now yeah so that would have been 2018 because now let's jump forward god it's all blurring together anyways and we just went to the stadium authority board in before this shutdown <laughs> january maybe and you guys the months i am getting so lost with the months now it is like everything has just become just this blob ever since the shutdown i'm like when was that okay i think january was when we went to the stadium authority board because get this, as they finally now, so they, they got the roof trusses up and they said, <laughs> we were full of shit basically and that was fake news and don't listen to us and we lost tons of followers and it was a mess and everyone hated us and they still hate us. And they call me all kinds of names. I get called just every, every horrible name you could think of, you know, from whore to skinny bitch to, you know, always tell me to eat and stuff even though I've told you guys all about uh, nutrition. I, I actually am very healthy, but they want to just, they, oh, and they love to say I'm on meth. That's everyone's favorite, which I, I never did meth. <laughs> I tried it one time, and I was like, that shit is insane. I never did that again. So that is, would not be my drug of choice anyways. You guys, I tell you what I do, I do weed. But anyways, that's everyone loves to say that one for some reason. Everyone has this obsession. See, you know, I see it on social media all the time. You're on meth to a lot of people. I'm like, what is everyone's obsession with meth? Why are it, and crack is the other one. Meth and crack. Crackhead, meth head. Jeez, it's funny. They just go to that to crack everyone. Crack Brack says he loves your stream. Oh, thank you. Crack Brack. Crack, say again. Brack Brack. I thought you said crack. Brack Brack. You guys, I, have, I lost half of my hearing in the Air Force, and then I got these things on, but um, I don't know if you get, so I can't hear very well. So when he says your names, uh, sorry if I say it wrong, if I can't really hear what he's saying. It's very hard for me. Things out of context, I really struggle with because, for the most part, I try. I kind of um, like a lot of words I miss, but you get the context, you know. So you'll know what someone's saying. You could miss some of the words. So if he's far away, I'll be like, "Oh, okay, I get it." But if it's something that I'm like, "What is that?" Like if it's out of context, I it's really hard because I'm trying to read his lips. But um, yeah, I lost half my hearing in this year. Uh, because I was on the flight line in the Air Force. And they offered to give me disability for life, but I didn't feel that I deserved it because I'd only been in for four years. And I felt, well, I don't know. I just didn't think it was that serious. And my mom had just killed herself, so I just wasn't really thinking. And the, the doctor, because you, you do a discharge. I got an honorable discharge. I did my four years, and then I honorably discharged. But you do an out process thing where they check you. So you did it when you came in, and they checked your health and everything. 
and then you do it and you leave so they want to see the difference and they said I lost half my hearing um, in the four years from being on the flight line and so they're like wow that was pretty intense so you could get paid for that since the military did that and then and I was like it's just my hearing <laughs> like, yeah I'm like yeah well but now I'm like man that probably would have been a good idea. But, you know, I just hate getting stuff like that anyways, though. I don't actually like getting assistance from the government because I really hate the government. So it's kind of, like, better that I don't get it. Um, and I get VA benefits, but they said those are probably cut off since I got a medical marijuana card. So yeah, so it's like, them. so even care. though you talk a lot of, like, politics and you seem really anti, like, government, anti-things... You actually supported them coming out. Yeah, I was in the military. I joined the military at 17 years old after 9-11. She had to get her parents' approval. I had to get my parents' approval. I graduated high school year. So 9-11 happened when I was a, a junior in high She's school. She's a hero. And um, <clears throat> then I decided, well, everything changed. I mean, it was really weird. I, I watched the second plane go through live because my mom was watching. She always watched the news. And so as soon as the news came on about the first one, she was watching it. And so we watched the second one live because at first we just thought it was an accident the first one but then by the time the second one you're like oh that's not actually had two planes in a row crash into a building so um it really affected me and uh, our school for two weeks all we did was watch tv they shut down it was kind of like this but they we went to school but um i i was fortunate to go to a school that was brand new um it, it had just been built in my town so we had tvs in every uh, classroom which was a new thing um because you know i'm 35 if you all don't know my age. So this was in 2001. Well, everyone knows when that happened. But um, so it was kind of new to have, like, TVs in all the schools. Like, my sister's school had not had that, you know. And uh, so they just, we went to school for two weeks, and they would just turn on the TV, and we would watch CNN and watch all these things. And it was pretty traumatic for kids to literally just watch news all day. I, and I hate the news because it's just so horrific. But I got really... Um, patriotic and I wanted to join the military I wanted to be a pilot um, but you know you have to have a degree to be a pilot so I thought I'd just first go in the military and get my degree while I was in so I graduated high school a year early because I was advancing in all my classes so I only had like a couple classes to finish and I just got those done as a junior and then um, uh, I graduated high school and my parents had to sign for me so then I ended up joining about exactly a year I joined because um, I couldn't join until after I finished school I had to do the delayed entry program so I joined while I was still in high school and then I had to wait six months to graduate and then I went in um, but I went in my my first year in the military should have been my senior year of high school so they they used to tease me and call me junior because I was actually a junior still basically in high school going in to the military and uh, my parents signed for me because they that's what I wanted to do my mom didn't like it but she had been in the army for uh, three years when she was you know 18 so she was like all right if you really want to do it but she didn't like the military but she was very patriotic or something she she loved Bush that sounds funny <laughs> I say sexual things all the time, and I know when I say it, but, but that one guy didn't even think that's funny. So she just loved George W. Bush, and I don't know why, because he's the biggest buffoon, but my mom just thought he was the cat's meow. She probably thought he was attractive, now I think about it, but oh my gosh, she wrote him like a letter and everything, thanking him for being such a great president. I'm like, he's one of the worst presidents. She thought he was so wonderful. So she was very supportive of me going in when George W. Bush was president, to protect George W. Bush. Um, oh my gosh, it's funny now to think about it, but if she, now she realizes that was a mistake, my mom on the other side would not be in support of anything George W. Bush was for and now. But she was Christian, and she was very, very staunch Christian. So anyways, um, I went in then, and then uh, everything changed when my mom killed herself, so then I ended up getting out. I was gonna stay in the military, I ended up getting a job on the AWACS, which is our surveillance plane, so I was a flyer. That's why I lost half my hearing, because when I was on the flight line, I don't know, it just, they didn't give us good hearing. They didn't give us things like this. That was only for the maintenance crew. We only got, like, the little orange ones you put in your ear, and that don't really help that much when you're working next to planes. You, but even though the flyers, we didn't wear it, buy them as much, but I became an instructor, so I actually flew, like, every other day 
you can't fly every day unless you're um, on a trip because they make you plan. They call it mission planning. You gotta fly, mission plan, fly, mission plan. So the most you can fly is every other day, and so I was doing that. Um, so I, I was getting a lot of hours, and you, the flights are often like 20 hours. Um, they go from, they range from 10 to 20 hours. So um, I was flying a lot. But um, anyways, um, back to the Raiders Stadium. I'm really jumping around. I, I don't, I, I, I don't want to get too much on my own life because I mean, I love to talk about my experiences, but it's, uh, I can get boring to people, so I always want to make sure to jump back and forth so I don't get out, because I'll just ramble about myself forever, and that's not that interesting. <laughs> but the Raiders Stadium, so then whenever that was, like I said, I can't remember what, the, 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 but it was in June of either 2018 or 2019 when we discovered that, and then um, they started having issues at the end of the year. They tried to lift the roof in November. And they, they couldn't lift it because since those roof trusses had been retrofitted in the air later, they were still off a little bit. And this roof had to be exactly precise. Um, the the guy who kind of runs the stadium, uh, like he's kind of the, the head of the crew there, his name is Don Webb, and he's a real asshole. Uh, we actually went to see him for Board Authority and Jerry Rich got in a fight with him, like arguing, not fight, we were arguing, Don Webb got all mad and walked off. And, um, we have all that. It's on YouTube. You guys can check it out. But um, uh, he said it was going to have to be as precise as a Swiss watch. Like it was like this had to be because this roof and what they were going to do is that um, they were going to lift very slowly. It's this EFTE roof and they were going to lift. It's um, it's just like a suspension. They're like the suspension bridges. So they have all of these cables and they were gonna lift it each day. I think it was like four inches a day, I wanna say was the number. Um, don't totally quote me on that, I can't remember. It's been a minute now. And there's so many other numbers in my head. But I think it was like four inches a day it was gonna range, or four feet a day, maybe four feet, I don't remember. But there was gonna be a couple point, but then it, they needed to pop it where it had to go. It was gonna be raised and it was gonna pop. And for that to happen, like everything had to be exactly precise. It, so all of the cables, all the bolts and everything. Well, when they started to lift, they found that it wasn't precise and bolts started flying off and the whole stadium shook. And we heard this from the workers um, directly. And of course, the media tried to push it down, but they had to actually come out about the bolts. They finally had to because we were barking so much and a lot of people on social media were mark barking about it. So they finally admitted that they, they busted a bunch of bolts. And they tried to say, oh, we only busted eight. But they were trying to say it was eight of like hundreds and thousands of bolts. But they actually busted eight of the like, uh, I want to say it was like, gosh, the numbers now are, are slipping out of my head. But I want to say it was like eight of like 44 structural bolts. So these were structural bolts. Not like, they tried to act like, oh, it's just one of, you know, Eight of, you know, just, uh, they got millions of bolts over there. Like, no, it was like eight of, like, 44, I think was the number, um, uh, of structural bolts, and they were busting. So then they had to call in, like, five engineers to tr figure out how to lift this roof, and it was a mess, and then, uh, so they had to go get um, uh, approval from the stadium authority to get more time, because they kept saying the roof was supposed to be done. First, it was supposed to be done, I think, in September. Then it was supposed to be done in October. Then it was supposed to be done in November. Then it was supposed to be done in December. And now, then they just got the roof done. They just finished the roof. Now, so they're on track supposedly to open for July 31st, 2020. After getting, uh, they had to get um, overtime approval and uh, they had to, you know, add a third shift in order to finish because of the disaster with the roof. Um, they also have had all kinds of things, you know, it snowed here in um, 2019. Yeah, so it would have been 2019. Okay, all that occurred in 2019. Now I remember, because the snow came in, yeah. See, it's all, it's, it's feels like it's been longer than that. But yeah, it was 2019 that this whole incident occurred because what happened, it was in March, March or February, we had snow here in Vegas, which is really weird. And it was like for five days, they couldn't work. So we started saying, wow, they're gonna be delayed. And they first barked at us about that. Then come May, and we talked to the worker that they messed up the roof dress, and that's in May and June. They work on the roof dress, and we get harassed by everyone that, oh, nothing is wrong, nothing is wrong. As every time we worked, talked to the crew, they're like, yeah, they're, they're, we put it together wrong. 
for fixing it. But if you talk to the media, they're, oh, absolutely not. Fake news, lies, 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 lies. We're like, okay. And Don Webb said everyone was lying and all this. But then they ended up being needing to get uh, approval uh, to get the roof extended, and they need approval for more money. So at that point, they were $130 million over budget. But now um, I think the number's back up to... Two billion and 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 I'm climbing, so they're back to the original projection of what um, it was. No, I, I think it's over two billion now. So the original projection was going to be two point three or two point four billion for the stadium, and they wanted to try and do it for one point eight, and now they're back up. Um, then they're saying it's probably going to be right back at two point four by the end of it. <laughs> so all that nonsense to get the cheapest guys, and then it all just people are cutting corners, not paying attention. I mean, they put together the parts incorrectly. It's insane. It's insane that at that level that you could make a mistake like that, you know? Um, we were kind of dumbfounded. And then they just had a lot of issues with the, the location is um, prone to flood. So they had to rebuild these walls that they were building. They were building these mud. Um, well, they didn't want to be mud. They were going to be dirt walls, but they were becoming you know, <laughs> slushy mud, <laughs> like the puddles um, every time they built them when it would rain. And so that was messing it up, and they kept having to do that. And then uh, it was the location floods really bad, and um, there's no parking at that location. It's it's a mess. It's just been nightmare after nightmare with that location. They didn't even want that location originally. They wanted a location closer to the Venetian, towards the north of Las Vegas, because Sheldon Adelson, he is the owner of the Venetian, the Sands, you know, Palazzo, all Sands properties. And he was the original person that really wanted to be involved in the stadium. He wanted to bring an NFL stadium to Vegas for his children, kind of for his legacy. And he was going to invest $700 million. Um, no. Yes. Was it? I, 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 yeah, I think it was $700 million. Um, and what was that? Yeah, he was going to be, I think, like, like a, a third investor, kind of, of the stadium. And that he wanted it somewhere else. So once they chose this lot, he, he pulled out and said, no, I don't want it there. So then they had to go try to find other ways to get funding. So it's been a nightmare with funding, too. And the way they got their funding was from the Clark County uh, Fund, which is the taxes from the hotels and from these weeklies. But now that we have all the hotels closed, it was we were already having a pretty bad year couple years after the Mandalay Bay incident here in Las Vegas so they were already behind on the money that they owe for the stadium from that fund it's behind because like they haven't collected enough from the hotel taxes and now we've been shut down for all this time so yeah the stadium is supposedly still on course but the, I don't know what they're doing with the funding it's just a nightmare um, and, and the funding comes a third from Mark Davis and the PSLs which is the uh, uh, personal seat licenses, you know, when you buy your tickets um, for like if you want to have the yearly ticket, you know, the season ticket there. So you get those um, ahead of time. So people have put deposits on and um, they required um, them to have like a certain amount was supposed to be done November 15th, um, back 2019. Right, that's why they didn't want all the news about the roof being delayed because they wanted to get those PSL sales in there. PSL, yeah. <laughs> I always want to get PSL or PLS. Yeah, PSL sells in, and um, before the public found out that there was a problem with the stadium, so that's why they wanted us to be quiet. So there's a lot of nonsense that happens all over the world, especially here in Vegas, a lot of corruption. But uh, so they got that, and then now look at this, all this nightmare. So so the money is supposed to be coming from the hotel taxes. We'll see how that happens. And then the PSL sales, well, um, so the majority of the people that bought the tickets here in Vegas, like the ones that are locals, were scalpers that were going to try to sell their tickets. So now I don't know what's going to happen because it's going to take a while for Vegas to recover. Like it, we thought we were going to have a fantastic 2020 season here for the Raiders, but it's going to be very slow here in Vegas. It eventually will pick back up, but entertainment is going to be the last to recover after this huge catastrophe and the catastrophe was unnecessary because it was for a regular flu virus people say oh it was necessary because we oh, our lives were at risk no they were not because people have been recovering since the very beginning and we come to find out that this flu virus has been around since november 2019 speaking of the same time as they were doing them psl tickets um 
we just didn't know because it was a regular flu virus. And they, that's when they found out people in California already have an immunity to it because they got it in November 2019. They didn't even realize because it was the regular flu. You know, you get the flu, you wouldn't bark about it, right, normally. And that's why this is weird because normally people would die to the level that they are right now. We just wouldn't know about it because it happens every year and we just don't. The media is not all on it. Right now, that's all the media wants to be focusing on. And so, um, so you got... So the, the, back to the Raiders, if anyone's interested in the Raiders. So you got the PSL tickets. Um, Mark Davis, that, that's his portion. So he uh, does the PSL tickets, and then um, it, it, he's going to bump in the rest of what's the third there. So And then, because Mark Davis doesn't have very much money, if you guys still know this. He's the owner of the Raiders. And Al Davis is his father, who passed away, who was an amazing coach and um, owner and everything. Everyone loved Al Davis. He was an amazing human being. But he was not known for making the best financial decisions in the sense of he didn't care about that. That wasn't important to him. So people thought he made poor financial decisions, but he didn't make decisions on finances. He made decisions on his heart. So like in the past when he benched Marcus Allen, who was one of the best players at the time, because he didn't like him. He had issues with him. The guy was really greedy. And this is, if you guys don't know, I, I, I looked into this so deep because I was so curious because everyone was talking about it. And I, I, man, I scoured the internet for all the facts about this. But what happened is early on, Marcus Allen kept trying to get more money and he would do things like hold out and not play. Like he would uh, do like strikes and uh, for more money and he would not show up to practice. He would not show up to the, you know, the summer, spring training, whatever, the training camps they have. And uh, Al Davis said, if you don't show up to training and if you don't show up to every game, then you will not play. And he just kept doing that year after year. And Al Davis said, I'm not going to play you. And people couldn't believe that he would bench one of the best players at the time, you know, like, so they, Marcus Allen could have helped them win. But he didn't care. And one time, he, um, the coach even threw him in, um, uh, and he got in trouble from Al Davis. And they won the game. Marcus Allen won the game for the team. They were losing, and they, you know, it was like, you know, where you needed just the, the last touchdown and, you know, score and uh, to win. And uh, Marcus Allen did that. And, he, and Al Davis was infuriated. He did not care that they won. He was infuriated that they put in Marcus Allen against his uh, – well, uh, like against his um, uh, orders, uh, he said, "Don't play him," and that was because he did not uh, agree with his character. So, back to now, Al Davis always made decisions that were from the heart, where he would choose players not for necessarily if it was um, gonna be the uh, all about winning. Even though he was about winning, just win, baby. But he was not about winning when it meant um, losing your. Uh, pride and your character is selling out in a sense and he thought Marcus Allen um, also was not a team player Marcus Allen made it be all about him instead of about the Raiders so um, and then there was a bunch of other uh, personal feuds between them too but that was the business side that he did not appreciate so that jump forward now we got Mark Davis he has a team that it, uh, everyone loves Al Davis, everyone loves the Raiders, but they've never had a lot of money. They've always been the team that didn't have a lot of money. Um, they had to do a lot, of, a lot of the deals that the, the players that Al Davis got was because everyone loved Al Davis, so he was able to work deals without money. He was able to be like, let's trade here, let's do this, let's do that, you know. He even um, recommended Terry Bradshaw you know, to the other coaches to become, you know, a great player. Like, he would recommend, he wouldn't, like, hoard, like, if he knew a player was good and he knew, like, he couldn't afford to play him, he couldn't afford them, but he's like, go on. And he was one of those coaches that let people know. Marcus Allen, he didn't because he was a dick and he was mad at him. So that was like, he was like, and the guy was greedy. But if you were a great player, he would not hold you back. Um, like, because the Raiders have never been known to have a lot of money. So um, he couldn't afford some of the best players. So now Marcus 
Marcus, Mark Davis um, inherits the team already not in the best financial situation. And now Mark doesn't have the charisma that his father had. People don't tend to like Mark Davis. So now he's been burning a lot of bridges. Uh, Oakland is infuriated with him. I have these guys that call me from Oakland all the time. Ever since we were involved in this whole roof trust thing, uh, they started calling um, me. Like we started getting calls just because our numbers on our website and stuff. And they call. I got info. I got to tell you about this. I saw your other thing. So this one guy always calls me, and he hates Mark Davis. Absolutely hates him. And then you know, and I started to be like, well, now I don't. Now I don't like your attitude. Now you like you people can be so extreme. You know what I mean? Like even though you might not agree with some of the things Mark Davis said, now you got this guy going the other way. Where I'm like, geez, Louise, lay off. Like I don't want to take his phone calls anymore because he's so hateful towards Mark Davis. When all Mark Davis was trying to do was try to make good decisions for a team, take his team to Vegas. I know that upset a lot of people because they're very upset they're leaving Oakland. But here's the thing: when Oakland, when the Raiders came back to Oakland. Oakland the city promised them to make them a new stadium back when they came back from LA and they never did and so Vegas said hey we'll get you guys a stadium so that's why they moved so at the end of the day Oakland can only really be mad at the city for not making them a stadium they can't be that mad at the Raiders or the NFL or Mark Davis but they are and they're suing all three the city is suing um, Mark Davis, the Raiders, and the NFL for allowing them to move to Vegas. So it's a mess. It's a mess. Um, and there's a lot of people that are really upset. And that's unfortunate because, you know, we wanted this to be a cool thing. I mean, we were, we were all excited doing the Raiders theme song, but then there's so many people that are so mad during, about this whole transaction, whether it be you know, Oakland fans or... Um, just people getting mad when we're telling the truth about the facts of because there has been so many um, just complications but I don't understand why they don't they're working through them so if anything say yeah there was a complication and look we're still making it through but it's like no one wants to ever admit if there was any oh no we didn't ever do anything wrong the one thing they have done several things wrong because they've had OSHA things already we've been there when they were getting yelled at for, uh, they had some OSHA violations already, and we got that on film too. We always happen to pop in right at the best times, and we don't know, you know, we're just like, oh, let's go down the stadium. Oh, look, they're having a briefing right out here as they got in trouble from OSHA. They had all the crew out in the parking lot, and uh, we were able to film it because they were on the loudspeaker and everything because they had to talk to the whole crew. Um, but, and I'm not, I'm not happy about it. The only reason why I chuckle is because the crew, not the crew, the crew is amazing. Uh, the people ahead of the crew, like people like Don Webb, have been extremely nasty to us and said that everything we said was a lie when we were telling the truth. So I chuckle then when something happens, um, like, oh, are you get an OSHA thing when you were saying, because he literally acts like they could do no wrong. And uh, he said, oh, we're all about safety. Safety is the number one concern of Morton Snowcraft. Well, really, because OSHA would say the opposite. That's what OSHA is for. So if you're getting OSHA violations, that would mean that you're not being safe. <sighs> and uh, the fact that they actually um, hid quite a few things. Some workers have come out and admitted that the, a crane fell over and they didn't report it to OSHA. There's been a lot of things coming out where some workers are tired of the shenanigans because they just tell the workers to lie all the time. But especially once a worker is done, because some workers only work for X amount of time and then their part is done. So when they're done, they're like, yeah, I'll tell you guys what's going on there. And there's been a lot of crazy. And that happens with every construction site. So I, I know that. And that happens with every everything, you guys. There's so much corruption in the world, like with so many businesses, and especially with the government. So if you think the government is not corrupting us or that they're not corrupt or that, you know, like, oh, oh, the government only tells us the truth. Mm -mm. that's not the case they really don't really care about the individual's life they care about making it seem like they care about the individual's life <laughs> that makes sense but if they cared they wouldn't send so many of our young off to war including myself at 17 years old for no reason these wars so back to that I joined because of 9-11 well then when you go to Afghanistan Afghanistan had nothing to do with 9-11 and now we've been in war for 30 years and we, uh, Trump, right before this, just bombed Iran again. 
the war on Iran. So, for no reason other than greed, there's always over uh, land, oil, or money, and then money is the bottom line of all those things, but it's often over the oil. Um, that's what we've been fighting forever. That's a, the Bushes give them credit for all the oil wars because they are in oil. That's their company. <laughs> if you guys don't know that, the, the Bushes are highly invested in oil. That's why we went and attacked all of these countries that have huge amounts of oil. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so if you think the government has your best interests, then you really need to wake up because they don't. If they did, for one thing, during this time, they would have not allowed anyone to work and they would have delivered us food if they really were worried about our well-being, like if this was really a deadly virus. But they knew it wasn't. Instead, they wanted to do this political stunt because if you all remember, they just tried to impeach Trump just a couple months ago, right before this happened, and that didn't happen. And then um, Trump uh, declares war on Iran and then uh, he starts, you know, saying he wants to become a dictator because his friend over there, Vladimir Putin, just became president for life of Russia. And Trump was already kind of talking about trying to remove the terms of presidency, which a president could get the approval to do that if they are, have the majority of the Congress and the Supreme Court, which he's about to have if, uh, what's her name, Ginsburg, I think it's her name, and that Supreme Court judge dies. That's what we have to do this morning, guys. <gasps> oh, gosh, my favorite. Yes, That's yes. what we have. Oh, yes. Hold on, let me get in on that. Gerald Sanders. So they have him um, again for a minute at um, Whole Foods. I'm so excited. They're, they're sparkling water with minerals, but they have a huge amount of minerals. So they're awesome, guys. Yeah, take it. All right, how's it going here? So they're very good, I think. Yeah. Um, they have a very large amount of minerals, uh, more than any other sparkling. So people think sparkling water is just about like the bubbles, which is actually kind of pleasant. I used to not like carbonation, but sparkling water, the majority of them have minerals. You gotta watch, some of them are just sparkling water. But if it says sparkling mineral water, then you're getting minerals. Yeah, well. And that's what you want. Yeah, avoid just the sparkling water. That's just bubbles. <laughs> then you're just getting carbonation. Um, but uh, if it has the minerals, so like Perrier's got the lowest mineral content. Pellegrino's better, and then Gerald Steiner's the best. Anyways, but you guys know I only drink water. So uh, we'll touch on diet for a minute. Um, now that we've talked so long about the Raiders Stadium, but yeah, I'm a big football fan. Um, but I don't watch football anymore, and so people don't understand that. They go, oh, "How's that possible?" But like I said, my life has just changed, so I don't care to watch the games anymore uh, but I will go to a game but I'm not going to sit at home and watch. for one thing I don't own a TV and I don't watch TV period uh, we once in a while on our iPad will catch part of a movie or part of a show if it's a series but we rarely even finish an episode um, and so we just don't do that we are always creating art ourselves so I don't watch sports anymore at all but I used to and I, I, I love a lot of sports we watched we were nuts about the World Cup um, twice uh, when it came through we had the, the uh, when I remember we were went really nuts when the men played and then when the women played I got I had um, uh, an Alex what's her, what's her name gosh Alex Morgan Morgan yeah I, I was gonna call her Alex Jones but that's that guy but it's always the name that first pops in my head. That's why I'm always like, wait, what's her name? And then I want to call her Katie Morgan, but that's the porn star. So I'm always like, wait, what is her name? Uh, no, Alex, Alex Morgan. Alex Morgan. I had one of her jerseys, and I loved it, and then it got lost when our car was stolen. Which I was bummed, because those were like $120 for the little, I was like, Jesus. And it was a small one. It was like this size almost, a little longer. You're like, that seems like a lot of money for this small jersey. But, uh, you know, jerseys are a lot. Um, but anyways, um, so, but I was more into football my whole life. I had never even watched soccer until I met Jai Rich, but I was just one of those people that I'd get into any sport. But football was my thing um, growing up, and then um, in the Air Force, I watched a lot of football. And, um, but now I, I just don't, but I still love the sport. And oh, I also played um, football in junior high um, on a flag football team. I was the only girl on the team. I was a cheerleader, and I wanted to play, and they didn't, 
my girls on the team, and then they were doing so bad one game, so they let me play. So I played in my cheerleading outfit, and then I got to play the rest of the season um, in a football outfit. But uh, but I played the one game in my cheerleading outfit, and then in high school I wanted to play football, but my stepdad wouldn't let me play because he said I was too small. He didn't want me to get hurt, so I ended up being a cheerleader. But I wanted to be part of the game. But Joe, I mean, that's being a cheerleader because the girls didn't understand the game, so they'd be singing the wrong cheer sometimes. I'd be like, oh no. Because they didn't understand, like, when we would change hands, you know, if we were singing offense or defense, I'd be like, and I was the only one knowing we are singing the wrong thing. I'm like, oh, man. And our coach is in the, <laughs> and then, that's the offense. And we're like, defense now. Go offense. Oh, jeez. <laughs> all the other girls had no idea, so they are just like, la, la, la. and I'm like, no, pass it down wrong. Stop. Because you're supposed to stop if you change, you know, if you did an interception or something. And stop the cheer and just be quiet and you can finish it but don't say anything but yeah um but anyway so i, I really do like sports but people go oh well, you don't watch football so how can you say you like football i don't know you can uh, appreciate the game without being glued in front of your tv anymore i just don't watch tv anymore so that's the bottom line but if i were to go to a game i would love that in person that would be awesome i hope i get to go to a raiders game after vegas recovers and stuff a little bit so news today is um, MGM uh, is planning on not opening until gosh when did I read so many I want to say it was August did he tell me August I think he said August. so what's gonna happen is I think Caesars properties a couple of them are gonna open first so MGM is just gonna wait all their properties um, so I, I think he said August, but I could be, I, he, he left, he went outside, I was going to ask him because he told me this morning, but, but here's the deal, so the plan is to just open like one or two properties to start, and they're planning on opening like, um, probably like Hara's, um, or Flamingo or something, like the, the cheaper properties, and then slowly start opening, but now MGM is saying they're not even going to bother until I think it was August at least or or middle of, yeah cuz yeah I think he said August cuz what are we May 1st is when everyone else yeah I think he said August I was like whoa that's crazy so they're just gonna go the whole s summer not open um, but here's the other thing we don't know if Governor Sisolak is gonna stick with the May 1st thing I'm hoping because he the other day so the mayor here is arguing with him big time and she's been arguing with him from the beginning so right there like if you're wondering there's been people from the beginning that felt this should have never happened because they knew it wasn't a deadly virus and the mayor here felt that way she was infuriated when governor Sislek forced them to close their casinos they were going to leave open all of the downtown casinos and i was still going to those casinos when um, mgm was the first to close mgm just closed on their own without the governor even announcing they just said they were going to close because they were losing so much money so what happened was the nba canceled first and then college basketball canceled and march madness is the best time in Vegas and it's our busiest time of the whole year it's like Christmas for Vegas because Christmas is very terrible here no one comes to Vegas for Christmas so our Christmas is in March which we just missed now um, but so as soon as the NBA canceled Vegas couldn't survive because they had so many things planned during um, uh, the March Madness like concerts and um, events and things that it was gonna be they just immediately had to start and all of the people started canceling too, all of the gigs so all of the artists started canceling like Jonas Brothers was one of the first to just cancel they weren't even supposed to play until middle of summer and they're just like we're gonna cancel now Lady Gaga canceled a residency like, all these people just canceled when they weren't even gonna start until like later in the year they just started canceling like crazy on Vegas so they're like well we can't stay open so this was in um, it's all gentlemen, yeah, this was in March, I believe. Uh, yeah, the beginning of March. Um, and so MGM closes, and I'm like, well, that's fine, because downtown and Caesars were gonna stay open. And then on St. Patty's Day, me and Jedi Rich were out, we were at Caesars, was the day Governor Sislek declared the shutdown for all properties, all hotels, and it was the weirdest thing. We were in the casino, both times we were in the casino, um, at Mandalay when they were shutting down the MGM properties because they did that on their own and it was just weird They just started shutting down the games one minute. Yeah, first they shut them down all half of them were shut down for a couple of days Then it became 
like all of them and it was just weird to see but basically like kind of escorting you out as everything was just shutting down and that happened there and then we were at caesar's we were at caesar's palace on saint patty's day i had a client and we found out that day and so they were kicking out the customers they were kicking out people and just sending them to the airport that was the only option because all hotels because i couldn't believe it like we are kicking people to the street it was the weirdest thing my client he was like i don't know what to do i came here for my birthday he came for his birthday he first got kicked out of an mgm property and then they's like oh I'll go stay at caesar's because caesar's is staying because caesar's that was the plan and then he just got there and it was the same guy i saw him at the mgm property and then he called me two days later to see him at the caesar's palace and um he got kicked out that night <laughs> i'm like this is insane you're kicking out tourists onto the street and then all their only option was to go sit at the airport people were sleeping at the airport we had to be at the airport for hours and hours and hours it was insane so but mayor goodman during the whole time did not agree with governor sislik's um decision and she knew it was a political stunt and she said please you're going to destroy vegas please she went in had several meetings with him well i guess she's trying again because he is just a bull he will just not budge on this and so a lot of people here believe it's absolutely ridiculous sheldon adelson also wanted to keep uh, venetian open he even said he would pay his workers during this shutdown um because he was planning on keeping his casinos open um so there's a lot of people here that do not agree with governor sisolak at all and the important people like the mayor so she's been trying to meet with him again to see if he can remove this before may 1st because california removed the restrictions yesterday so they're really wanting to open Vegas earlier than May 1st, but he is being very adamant and Governor Sislik is saying, absolutely not. And I don't know why now, uh, but like I said, now you can see if, if you didn't believe it was political before, you can see now because other people are opening up uh, and they're seeing that the virus has already hit its peak and they are coming down and less people have died than the regular flu virus. And people are recovering like crazy when they do get it. So it's not deadly. You actually, it's got a great recovery <laughs> ratio. Um, so there's no reason. Oh, and also you can't say Governor Sislik was only worried about people's health because during this entire process, he allowed all stadium to, uh, all stadium and, I'm sorry, all construction to continue, including the Raiders Stadium, um, which like I said, that was his baby. So the reason why he allowed all construction was only for the Raiders Stadium. So, but he had to say all construction because he couldn't just say, let the Raiders Stadium go. But that's all he wanted because that's his baby, that's his thing, that's his little project that he feels he is responsible for bringing the Raiders. He literally does, he says, I am the one that brought the Raiders to Las Vegas. That's what he, his, his 15 minutes of fame there, you know, that's what he says. Um, so he did not want that to stop, because like I said, they've already had, so, so, bef so we had just gone to that stadium board authority, I think that was in January, they were already requesting approval for more money and more time you know, and more workers, um, and more time for the roof, because they were supposed to have that roof done, and they just got it done. So if they had been shut down at all, they would not finish on time. Not a chance, because they were already just so, they're, they're even still kind of like wondering if they're gonna make it, and they've still been able, allowed to work during this whole process. They've been allowed to work full on, full on crew, no limitations to them. Just recently, they started saying, let's try to do six feet, but a lot of the projects, you can't be six feet, so then it doesn't even apply to those projects. So, like, in the ones where you can be six feet apart, be six feet apart, but if you can't, then oh well. And two workers tested positives um, on the site for the COVID-19 uh, coronavirus, and they continued the stadium going. Um, a bunch of workers tested positive at the resort world. They finally had to shut that down just because so many workers were getting sick, so they had to like hazmat the whole thing. But Governor Sislek didn't shut it down. He was allowing that to continue, um, even though worker after worker was getting sick. So if he actually cared about anyone's health, he would have shut down construction. So you can't tell me he cares about people's health. So this is 100% a political thing. And I don't know now at this point what he's getting off on anymore because the governor over in California already, unless he wants to be the one that did the most, like if he wants to say, I took the most extreme measures, and that obviously is what he wants. He wants to be known. Well, I hope that bites him in the ass later as the, the biggest buffoon because that's what he's gonna look like when people realize that this was only a regular flu virus. So if the longer he holds out, 
the more of an idiot he's going to look like when people really realize the truth. So we'll let him do that. You know, we're, we're making it through. Um, so to be honest, um, it, I, I've come to the fact I don't really care. I really want the casinos open, but um, I want it more for everyone else now. You know what I mean? In the sense of um, there's so many people out of work. But we are making it. We're, it's tough. We are stretching every penny. Uh, we, we don't have extra pennies. We live um, just in these. Like, we, we don't have any sort of savings, and we don't have any credit. We have no credit. We don't have credit cards. So we have no credit, which is nice because we have no debt. But we, that also means we have no credit available ever. We could not. We, we messed up our credit, so we can't have credit cards of any level. So everything is what we have. You know, it's not like this fake money that everyone's like, oh, just get a little more uh, on your credit card and just charge things your credit. We don't have that opportunity here. So everything we have to, it has to come just directly from our bank account, not a credit card. Um, and that is a very good way to live out here. Jarvis is going to make me a little weed here. Hi, Jarvis. How are you doing today? Pretty how's good. everybody you doing? How, how you, how's the audience? How you guys doing? Mm-hmm. You guys all learning a lot? Learn a lot about Vegas? Um, so that's Grav Labs um, they, for the, the pipe. They make all of our glass weed from Grav Labs. If you guys are into smoking weed, check them out. They have the coolest bongs and pipes, and they're not. Okay, if you've never bought a nice bong or pipe, you might be like, oh, wow, it's expensive. The pipes, probably not so much, because those are pretty average, but the bongs, at first, you'll be like, Whew. but best, best thing ever. I mean, amazing. We have so many of their pieces, so just G-R-A-V. I think it's, I don't know if they're gravlabs.com or if they're grav.com, but I think it's gravlabs.com. Um, but they have the coolest stuff that's all of our stuff we have that alien nick we call the green uh chiller it's an ice chiller um but that one is the sherlock so anyways we uh smoke weed that's what we do a lot of people uh think we do other drugs or think uh, we have eating disorders this that we did in the past we absolutely did in the past um i was a bulimic drunk cokehead that <laughs> i did all three of the at the same time uh for quite a long time um, and now, um, I eat all organics, as y'all know, and, uh, yeah, we, yeah, it's like, and we smoke weed. Here's the thing, guys, life is <coughs> all about calibration. I mean, how do you know what you don't know until you do it? Right, so that's what let people me finish. won't let themselves do these things either. Well, let me finish it, my, my, my sentence here. And, and that's another thing. The, the, see, our generation was raised by people on caffeine. And that's why I think that the, that the audience and everyone can only think that the, the, it's a three, like everything is a one sentence thing. And they're always quick to jump in because everyone was raised by people on caffeine. And that's one of the main things you were talking about, like get yeah. off the caffeine. You no, know, my mom, um, you know, started me on caffeine at the age of five. Um, because five? We, because we needed to get up for school. So I grew up uh, without a lot of money. Um, my mom, um, my parents, just had very crappy jobs to say the least when I was very young um, you know like they did a lot of janitorial jobs um, they decided to become missionaries we went to Mexico when I was three so they just they just be they didn't have the education or anything they didn't go to college so they they went to Bible college is what they chose to go to not like a regular college because they were Christian so their education didn't help them they didn't have the education that was useful I should say so they had pretty crappy jobs so um, usually janitorial jobs, and the one job my mom had is she, uh, this was just an additional thing besides her other jobs, is we had to clean the school and take care of, they had a thing where you could, I went to a private school, but it was a little crappy private school, like it wasn't a nice one, it was in a, <laughs> it was in modulars in front of the church, and it was like $150 a month for my um, tuition, my mom couldn't afford that, so we cleaned the school, and then she did the before school where you watch the kids because all the parents want to drop off their kids before school and leave them after school. And with the private schools, they do that. They like they watch your kids for free. Well, they have my mom do it. Um, and then they gave us the free tuition. So, But we'd have to be at school. We had to be there to open at 5 a.m. 
Like we were the ones when they would start dropping off their kids at 5 a.m. So that meant we had to get up really early. And my mom at that point was a single mom. Um, uh, so she just started giving us coffee and uh, to get us up. And she didn't know it was bad for us. And no one, most people don't know it's bad. But you guys all still believe it's good. And I was the biggest caffeine. Uh, like I even worked in a coffee shop in high school. I loved it. <laughs> I was all about coffee. I was, I would make like, towards the end, we were making like 10 pots of coffee a day. And we, even when we lived in the cave, we all followed us from the cave, we were drinking so much coffee, but here's the issue with coffee. You know, what's wrong with coffee or caffeine? I love it. I know, everyone wants to hear that it's so great and that nothing's wrong with it. And you wanna believe that because you don't wanna give it up because it's highly addictive. But what it does, caffeine, if you don't realize, is it numbs your senses. It like dulls everything. So it like takes all your senses and just puts them on relax mode, you know, like let's chill. Put, I like to say put your relaxed shorts on, you know, and you're just chilling. Well, that's what you told everything to do, all your hormones, everything. So um, that's why you feel less tired or less hungry because you don't realize it. So your senses are numbed, if that makes sense. So like you still are just as tired and just as hungry but you don't feel that way and that's what it does now you go oh, great cool that's what I want but the issue with doing that though one of the really big issues is that you numb your hormone for insulin so what happens you always have um, insulin hormones that are you know regulating your blood sugar in your body that's why diabetics that doesn't work so they have to take insulin to get that going properly because they are short on insulin well, when your insulin and hormones start being numbed down or dulled down, well, then your blood sugar rises because they're not pumping the way they would regulate and keep that all regulating and flowing. So then your blood sugar rises. Well, then when your blood sugar rises, it tells your body to produce insulin. That's the automatic reaction. So then your body produces more insulin, even though you had like insulin over here, but it was kind of just like chilling. It was like in timeout mode. <laughs> well, now your body starts producing more insulin. And then as soon as the caffeine wears off, then these guys start producing again. So now you have like all this insulin. But the problem with insulin is insulin tells your body to store fat. That's like one of its big things. It says store fat and go into dormant mode and go into like a hibernation. That's what insulin does. Like it's, because it, when your blood sugar rises, it's saying, oh, you're, you're, you're getting too excited. Let me bring you down. So insulin brings you down. So caffeine brings you down and then the insulin brings you down. So day after day after day, you're also wondering why you're tired, even though you're drinking caffeine because you're actually drinking the caffeine and then you're basically telling your body to go into chill mode and chill out and go to sleep, be like a bear and hibernate. And then we wonder why we have to keep going because what happens, the reason why you like the initial is because your blood sugar rises. That's the jolt you like from caffeine because you numbed everything. So we like that feeling, but right away your body go, uh oh, and starts producing insulin. And then that's when you start to feel tired again. <laughs> and that's that constant up and down, up and down, up and down. And that's very bad to do your system. People think it's good to jolt your system. Like they think like, if they say, oh, I'm gonna trick my brain. I'm gonna do this thing where one day I do this exercise and the other day I'm gonna do another exercise to trick my brain and da, da, da. Well, doing different exercises on different days is, is a good idea. I mean, that's just a, a good thing. You don't wanna necessarily only work out one muscle, but that's not, it's not working because you're tricking your brain. Your brain doesn't actually appreciate being tricked. But if you're changing up your exercise, that's just a good thing. <laughs> But tricking your brain, it doesn't appreciate, and it will react to the most, uh, um, it'll go to the survival thing, like the quickest survival thing. And usually the quickest survival thing means either shut down, store fat, go into rest mode, because your body's all about surviving means safe to your brain. So safe means don't do anything. <laughs> so anything you do is unsafe. Oh, you could get hurt. If you do anything, you could get hurt, right? So safe would be, just lay down, you'll be safe. But eventually, if you lay down for long enough, you're not safe because you become obese and depressed and all kinds of thing, complications of just laying around. You're, 
eventually your muscles and joints and things are not going to work as well if you're just sitting on the couch all day. So there comes a point where your brain thinks it's being safe, but then it can actually be harmful to you. Because now it's safety was sit on the couch and eat or just relax or sleep. But now you're getting health problems because of all of the weight complications. And um, so not only do you, does weight contribute to a lot of these diseases and disorders, but also just the amount of sugar you're intaking is contributing to most of the diseases diseases and disorders and including cancer. So cancer feeds on sugar. That's the only thing it feeds on. Like that's what it lives on is sugar. So if you take sugar out of your diet, the cancer will go into remission. I mean, it's that's what I always do with cure to cancer. Don't eat sugar. And I mean, people think, oh, I'm not eating white sugar. No, no, no. I mean, sugar is in everything. So unless you are eating like an all organic like we do, we eat all we eat is organic protein and an animal protein. We are not vegan or vegetarian. And we are the opposite. We eat all animal meat. Um, and I go, oh, what about the animals? Well, for one thing, you guys know how I feel about death. Death is a beautiful thing and it's a part of life and it's a necessary part of life. And an animal does not mind dying. If anything, they like going to the next place. Now we don't want to torture animals here. That's why you choose options like organics, GMO free, no antibiotics, no hormones, no steroids, pasture raised, no cages. You, all of these things you can look at now on the packaging. And then you can know the animal was treated. And you say, oh, well, it's more expensive. Yes, it's more expensive because for one thing, it's healthier for you. And that's the big thing. So why don't you spend the extra on your diet? That's where you should spend. If you want to save a penny, save it somewhere else. Because your food should be where you put the focus of your concern. So, and you're going to end up spending less because I guarantee you're spending more by you know going to fast food and going to restaurants, going to Starbucks. We do not eat out. We only cook at home. And you did great. When I'm not working, I can do that. But what about when I go back to work? Well, if you get in a routine and figure out what works for you on a diet like that, maybe you can prep the stuff the night before, you know, make yourself up some organic chicken breasts or something and eat them cold in the morning or, or warm them back up on the stove. Don't use the microwave because then you just took out most of the nutritional value of it. So you don't want to microwave organics. You can microwave your other stuff because that stuff's bad for you anyways. It don't matter. But if you have organics, don't ruin them in the microwave. Man, you guys are beautiful organic. Don't stick it in there. We only use the microwave to store warm food. Like it's like a keep it as like a heater, and I use it for a timer and a fan. That's it. I've actually never. I only time I've ever turned it on was like on accident. If I push the thing, I'm like, oh, don't turn that thing on. <laughs> I've never actually ran it for anything. We haven't microwaved anything. There's not been not even heated water or anything. I mean, because we wouldn't do that. We'd put that on the stove. Um, so. choose the food that's best for you and the animals and guess what you'll feel better and at the end of the day you will save money because organics are so nutritious and you're gonna like you won't necessarily feel this at first because you're used to all of the crap but there comes a point when you're gonna realize that when you eat organics you feel so satisfied yeah but you never experience with other food that's so true where you'll be like, oh, wow, I didn't know I could just eat uh, Here, this and feel I'm the evidence, cool. because look, I mean, she's always been pretty oh, much Oh, he thin. lost about 150 pounds. Shut so, up. for those of you who can't, can't see, I mean, I, I don't even go to the gym. He was 300, 300, what, 25 pounds, I think? 325 pounds. 325 pounds. And, that, and I should be about 200 2016. pounds. 2016. Right, and I just listened to what she said, and... Now we don't know his weight, but I would say you're about like 180 probably. No, I'm probably 200. I don't think I'm. I think you're about 180. That'd be pretty. Uh, you haven't weighed yourself a long time. I mean, you were like 200 the last time. You've lost. But I haven't been 180 since I was like in sixth yeah, grade. Yeah, but you're about. Because I'm six foot two. I know, but you're, but you're so like. What happens when you eat organics is you're, that you actually start to get smaller and smaller. It's. Crazy. I'm not trying to get smaller. The, oh, point, not, the weight doesn't matter. My point is this. Is that I was just trying to let them know to like they could understand the difference. It doesn't matter whether I'm 200 or 180 if I come off a of 325, okay? <laughs> yeah, my Continue. Point, my, my point was what happens with organics is very interesting because you're not trying to lose weight necessarily. Like, in the beginning you are, but eventually you're just doing it. Because well, what happens is 
you start to notice that you literally start to get smaller because you don't realize all of these years your bones have been getting bigger and all your muscles and stuff due to these GMOs and steroids and hormones from the other foods that you've been consuming at second hand by either um, with the plants and veggies or with the animals. So they also put the hormones and steroids in the uh, fruit and veggies. That's why you get really big fruit and veggies now where they used to be small. You used to have small apples. Now you get these big old hefty apples and things. Same with, you know, all the fruit. So then you consume that. So then year after year, you actually, your, your body mass was getting bigger, like your actual bones. So what I was trying to say about Jedi Rich, about the weight, we don't, his scale, it doesn't matter. But what he doesn't realize is each day he's actually getting smaller his frame because he's taking off That's true. all of that, that crap that he had. we built that. our bones and our, our muscle and with the protein from genetically modified hormone steroided out things being fruit, veggies, animals, whatever it was, uh, all of these years. Now as we eat the organics, we're finding our body that we never knew we had. So he's saying, oh, well, that's smaller than I was in high school. Probably because in high school he was eating the crap food. Like both me and him from the time we were young immediately started eating most of the garbage that all of y'all are and the caffeine and the alcohol and um, just all of the packaged everything, all of this conventional crap, all the artificial everything, the flavorings, the, the uh, uh, energy drinks, all of these things, all this. We got this flavor and that flavor and artificial sweeteners and all that stuff. All that stuff's really, really bad for you, which I've explained before. I'll maybe talk, talk about it in a second. I'm really, I get on too many different topics. There's just so much to talk about. But I believe we don't wear ourselves anymore, but I believe each day it's interesting because we can see with our clothes, they're getting bigger because our body is slowly taking off the that extra stuff that we didn't even know. We thought we were maybe even toned. There was times where you're like, oh, I thought I was as thin as I could get and I thought I was toned as I could get or whatever. And then you do organics for the longer and you're like, oh wow, I'm even smaller than I was. And it just happens that way without even trying. So that was kind of what I was trying to express is he's probably small because I've been buying his clothes and he has always been wearing extra large shirts. And he, from the time I knew him, um, he, when I first met him, he was wearing size 38 because he had trimmed down right before I met him. And then by the time right before um, he uh, started, he could not even fit into size 44. Um, his 44 pants had become too tight. And that's when we started um, changing our diet um, because I had the bulimia. So during my bulimia, Jedi Rich got really fat. He was also bulimic, but he didn't do it as well, so he got fatter than me. He would only just throw up some things and then consume a lot of it. So he ended up being fatter where I stayed thin. Um, but now he is in his size 36 pants and they're loose on him, which he's never in his life worn that. So I've been ordering for him. So he don't even realize he, he still thinks he wears 38. And I'm like, no, you're swimming now in your size 36. And he's never in his life because he's 6'2". And he's always been at least a uh, size 38 and always extra large. And now I, I'm buying him only large shirts and he's in 36 pants. And um, so, uh, and, and me, I, my whole life, I was someone that was never extra small. I was always usually like medium. Now most of my things are extra small. And, um, and I'm not saying these things to brag to you guys. What I'm saying is this is all through organics. So if you feel no way, I've been fat my whole life, I can't be thin. That is not true because here's the thing, you have been fat your whole life. That is probably true. Yes, in your, the current things that you've been eating, you've probably been fat because probably your mother didn't eat, didn't eat very well while she was pregnant with you, so you even were probably born a fat baby. And even if you weren't a fat baby, just immediately after being a baby, you're given crappy food. You know, we give kids a lot of sugar and crap. Even when we're trying to not, or even when we think we're giving them healthy stuff, we're giving them all these fruits and veggies that are just so much sugar and juices and things that give kids juice. Juice is just straight sugar. I've talked about another blog, I'll, and that one I could go on forever, so check out another blog where I'm talking about juice, but um, that just goes straight in your bloodstream, so that's just straight sugar. But anyway, so yes, for your whole life, you have probably been fat, and a lot of people have been that way, but if you do what I'm saying, you gotta do organics, GMO-free, gluten-free, dairy-free, 
caffeine free, alcohol free, and like artificial anything free. So here's the bottom line. So it sounds like a lot of no's and free, but all it's saying is to eat food the way it originally was made on earth before we started modifying it and changing it and making it man-made and convenient. So basically you wanna eat the food from nature. So you wanna eat fruits and veggies from nature without all of the hormones and steroids and genetically modified things and making, they even put coloring in uh, fruits and veggies now because people like it to be a certain color. Um, what you'll find out with organics, things are not the same, they're not consistent. That's what people don't like that. They go, well, this is smaller and it's funky looking. And that's because it's real. When it all looks the same, that's not real. So um, you want to do fruits and veggies that are from nature and then real animal protein. And people go, oh, I don't want to eat animals because I love animals. I love animals as well. I don't know if you guys saw yesterday. Oh, my gosh, I almost forgot. I was going to talk. If I had come on yesterday, I would have been livid. But you know how I feel about these masks I hate these masks. I think it's so ridiculous because this is a normal flu virus. These masks, all they do is just encourage the hysteria. Now, it's one thing if you work in the healthcare profession or if, even if you're at the grocery If you're working, you might want to do that because you're interacting with so many people and there is a virus going on. But when I see just everyone wearing them, when they're like not even around other people, um, I'm like, come on. You just look like you're just someone that believes anything when I see that because... That is the hysteria. So I've been saying that, and people, oh, whatever. Well, guess what? Yesterday, you guys know I love the pigeons, and you know it's illegal in Las Vegas to feed the pigeons, which is just absolutely ridiculous. They made it illegal to feed the pigeons, but legal to kill them. You can murder pigeons here, but you can't feed them in Las Vegas. Can you believe that? This place is something else. I'm from California originally, and this place is something else. I've never seen some of the nonsense that occurs here. And then they made it illegal to be homeless. It's illegal right now to be homeless in Las Vegas, which is going to be interesting since so many people are losing their jobs. So uh, what, are they just going to pick up everyone? Okay, good. And they can stay in jail. At least they'll have a, a nice warm bed versus living on the street. But are you going to house everyone now and care for them just because they're homeless? It's ridiculous. So anyways, back to my pigeons. Yesterday, a pigeon got, I want to cry right now. Oh, my gosh. She got a surgical mask stuck to her. And she couldn't get it off. It was stuck in her feathers. And we took a bunch of video and we tried all day and she got so, so frantic and upset. She was so distraught. In the morning we got video of her and she was looking nice, her coat. By the afternoon we tried to catch her and tried to help her and I tried to cut it off. I, you could get pretty close to her with the glasses. She wanted so bad to help, but her natural instinct would, because they, they know me. So she knows I was trying to help her. All the pigeons here love us because we feed them, I don't care. Fuck you, Sisley. Um, I feed him, and so does everyone here. Actually, everyone in our apartments feeds the pigeons, so they could come arrest us all. Every one of our neighbors around here feeds the pigeons. I saw a girl the other day dropping popcorn over the thing. I was like, okay, the pigeons were eating up the popcorn. She's like, feed this little girl. She was, she's only maybe like eight, dropping the popcorn, and everyone does. They, they put their food over the thing for the pigeons. But, um, she got that mask stuck to her and we couldn't get it off and I never saw her again after a certain point but midday she was so frazzled her her feathers were just she because she'd picked at herself so much trying to get this mask off it was stuck to the back of her and I was so upset because I love birds and um, I didn't see her so I don't know what happened I don't know if she died I don't know if birds can kill themselves but she was so distraught I mean, but by, by the last time I saw her, she, I mean, she was losing her mind. She could not get that surgical mask off and she wouldn't allow anyone to help her. And we tried to catch her even with that. We tried to kind of, um, we we're going to try to catch her with the trash can and then, you know, try to uh, get her and then uh, be able to get it, cut it off of her. Just be able we could hold her. We could get it because we've held pigeons before. People think pigeons have diseases. That's another misconception. So they uh, fear that the pigeons carry a flu virus. But pigeons actually don't have the uh, ability to carry the flu virus that they say. I think it was, I forget what it was, the bird flu virus or something. They always say that pigeons have this virus. And actually they found out that pigeons are not able to even carry the virus that they claim they have. And pigeons are actually um, not dirty animals. People think they're dirty because they eat trash. They only do because 
that's what's available. They prefer not to. They like bird seed a whole lot better than the trash, I'll tell you that much. Um, we give them bird seed. But um, they're extremely intelligent creatures. And it's uh, such a shame that other people are so awful to them. They think just because they poop, who cares? It's poop. We poop too. We cause a lot of waste in the environment. We just don't see it as much because we flush it down the toilet, but I mean, it goes somewhere. So, oh, I ruined my car, I ruined my rail, I ruined my whatever. They're, they're, they're part of nature. Get over it and repaint your darn railing or something, you know? It's like, don't kill the bird just because it pooped on your railing. That's ridiculous. It's not, uh, or, or starve them out. They, they don't want to feed them because they wanted them to starve out. Because when they're fed, then they continue to populate because they're getting fed. So they want to starve them so that they don't um, continue to populate and that the current ones die. That's what they want them to do. But no one agrees with that here. A lot of people feed the pigeons all the time. They say, fuck you, Las Vegas. Um, but anyway, so she got that surgical mass sector in. Last time I saw her, she was so frazzled. And then I didn't see her again. So I don't even know if she died or what, but she was at a, a point where I feel like if a kid, if a pigeon could commit suicide, and I don't know if they do, I don't know if birds have that ability, but she was gonna, cause she was, she couldn't take it. She was so distraught over this stupid surgical mask, which I'm sure the person didn't need walking around here. So that really upset me. So I love animals and um, you can eat animals and love animals. Uh, Death is a part of life. You can't appreciate life without death. Um, I had a mother that committed suicide and a brother that died in a motorcycle accident. My mother was 46, my brother was 26. So they were extremely young when they died. So it was very tragic. And uh, I spent a lot of years <laughs> uh, in turmoil over it. And now I'm finally starting to feel better about it. And one of the big reasons is because I um, know that my mom and brother are still around all the time. And I experience um, their presence all the time now. And so, once you experience that, you'll know that dying is not the end. So when you eat an animal, you can know dying is not the end for them either. And if anything, the next life will be better for an animal than right here. And the next life is not like, what people want to classify the next life, but you don't want to classify it because I, I said this before, if you were to classify it, you'd only be using terms that you know of on earth. Well, the next life you don't know anything about. It's of things that we don't couldn't understand because you can't describe it. Because if you've never seen something, it's very hard to describe if it doesn't look like anything else. If it's so out there. And so that's how the next life is going to be. That's why we don't know. That's why we don't know even from the people that are dead that you can hear things from them. But they're not going to tell you about that because you don't understand. They wouldn't be able to put it into words that we could understand of what it looks like or what it's like. Because that would be limiting to earth uh, things. And you don't want to limit your next life. Uh, let it be a surprise. But there is a next life. And you'll experience that for sure if you've lost a loved one and you'll know that you feel their presence. But you could channel anyone that's died. A lot of artists channel other artists. Um, like you'll be like, wow, they, they'll even say channeling, but they don't take it seriously. They think it's like channeling like dress up and then pretending to sing like the person. No, they're actually channeling that artist very often. Sometimes they're not. And those are the people that are kind of frauds and they don't do it as well. And you're like, eh, it didn't sound very good. Like they'll do a cover and you're like, eh. But then when you see the person do the song and it's an amazing cover and you're like, oh my gosh, it was like, it was like David Bowie was right there. Well, yeah, he was. That person was channeling him and letting us experience that. And the artists love when we do that. And more people should do it, but most people are scared of that. They fear, they think that, de that death is like demonic and, and from the Satan and devil and stuff. Well, it is, but that's not a bad thing. See, we have bad connotations for these things, but they're not bad things. If you think about it, what, it, what has Satan ever done that was so bad? They say, oh, he got kicked out of heaven. Okay, but then what did he do? Okay, he ruled, he's the ruler of the underworld. Okay, he tortures people according to who? Really, people are just burning, burning for eternity. Well, they're not doing that, I'll tell you that, because my mom killed herself, which, according to the Christian faith, you go to hell. Well, I'll tell you one thing, yeah, she ain't burning. She ain't burning, she's enjoying herself. So, um, really, um, hell is, if anything, what most people would think of heaven, 
but they have it wrong. Like hell is where the fun is. That's where the party's at. That's where the you know the the sex, the drugs, the <laughs> the fun. Uh, heaven is the fucking boars up there sitting on clouds. No, I'm just kidding. But no, but seriously, I mean people have this um, weird conception that like sitting on clouds is going to be the fun thing, and that hell would be the not fun thing. You're like, that's never the case. It's not the case. Um, what, Satan has always been known for the fun stuff. Like, Satan made me do that. Made me have the best night of my life, basically, where I went and had a wild night. But, oh, Satan made me do that. Yeah. The reason, uh, and the biggest uh, complications that uh, come from things that um, you would call satanic is the legal issue. So most things like that um, people get in more trouble for legality. So like if you were to do drugs, per se, like, um, which are satanic, the more issue is you get in trouble or they're expensive because they're illegal. But that is not the actual drug issue. See, most people's addictions come out of because they're trying to feel something because they were told wrong information so they don't feel satisfied and they usually were religious so they switch to drugs to try to fill a hole that they can't seem to fit anywhere. So they dive really deep into the drug addiction because they were lacking. But if they felt content and if they were eating healthy and if they knew that life was not so bad and that when you die it'll be something great that you won't be punished, then they wouldn't live in so much turmoil. But we're told if you do drugs, you're going to hell and you're gonna to be tortured. And if you have sex before marriage and all of these things, you're gonna be tortured. So of course, when someone goes to do these things, then they just go, well, fuck it, and they get in. And it, doing drugs is not very enjoyable when um, you are worried about you know, getting arrested or something, and that um, causes for uh, most of people's tripping out occurs because they're scared they're gonna get arrested, or um, their work's gonna find out, or you know, their husband or wife may find out, or the loved ones may find out, it's always because of things out of fear of being shunned more than fear of actually the drug, if that makes sense. Now there are drugs that are strong enough to where the drug can be an issue and generally those are the man-made drugs like pharmaceuticals and heroin is a real strong one. Um, uh, and meth is a man-made one so that falls into that category. But things like coke and weed is not even a drug but people will call it a drug. And even things like mushrooms, I've never done mushrooms but I know those are from Earth. So when you, if you were to do those and you didn't have the legal complications or the fact that they're generally pretty expensive and have all the guilt and shame, then most people would just have a good experience and go about their way and that's how drugs used to be. But as they made them more and more illegal and more and more expensive, as they make them illegal, they become more expensive. As you all know, the black market, things get very expensive um, because it's illegal. People are taking risks, <laughs> you know. Drug dealer isn't gonna sell it for nothing. He just risks, to, you know, going to jail for that. So things become more expensive, um, and people feel so much shame and guilt. So they get very deep into these addictions. But once you take out the shame and guilt, and you're like, wait, I don't have to feel bad for this. Very quickly, you don't even necessarily want to do the thing as much as you thought, because usually you're doing things to cover. So a lot of drugs are to numb the pain or to mask something whereas weed is all about opening your mind and actually making you deal with stuff that's why some people don't like weed they're like oh that trip me out yeah because you saw like yourself for real for the first time and you were like oh that's usually what happens because what happens is most people are living a lie to themselves like they're not happy with the way they're living but they're lying to themselves so the first time they do weed they're like man i tripped out i like saw life a whole new perspective yeah that's a good thing for most people well, for everyone, I mean, it's always going to be, but especially um, if your perspective is way off, then you're probably going to trip more than others. So then they're going to be like, oh, I don't want to do that again. But keep doing it and work through it. I know when I first started doing weed a couple of times, I tripped out. It was usually if I did the edibles, which I think those have something to do with the sugar combination. So uh, I would not recommend edibles because of the sugar. They have sugar with it, which... The sugar makes for a weird combination with weed. You get stomach aches, and I found that I tripped out more with the combo of that, because I'm telling you, it's, the sugar is not good for you. The sugar is a drug, so we don't think about that. So we don't think about, so you talk about mixing drugs. Well, sugar and caffeine are drugs, 
So if you mix that with anything else, and now you say, oh, well, we need sugar su for survival. We need like 30 grams a day for survival. The rest is in excess and has now become a drug addiction because it's in excess. It's more than you need in becoming um, lethal and deadly to you as sugar in excess becomes deadly um, because it ends up feeding things like cancer, candida, and all of our diseases and disorders. And it also makes us overweight, which eventually leads to even more health conditions. Because as you put on weight, everything is, it's harder on your organs and joints and bones and muscles and everything. So weight is not just about the looks. It's not about like, oh, well, it's pretty to be um, health. Or people say, oh, it looks good now to be fat or, you know, don't call someone fat or, you know, it's nice to have, you know, the, the more cushion for the pushing and things like that, you know, um, and the big asses and stuff. And that's becoming a style. And that's great. And, I, and a lot of these women are very beautiful and men, you know, they look great. But the problem is at the end of the day, if their weight is above their weight what they should be, they are going to see more health complications, even if they do look good. And that's why it's an issue. So it's not about uh, preference of uh, how you look. It's, it's what is your healthy weight? And everyone has a different one. You know, some people are always going to have a big old ass, and that's where other girls are so jealous. Like, I don't have much of one, and I always thought it'd be nice to have a nice bubble one, you know, and mine's pretty small. But no matter what I do, that I wasn't going to get it the way the other girls did unless I did some surgery. So we got to be comfortable with our own body and find what that body is, and we can't compare it to the uh, Kim Kardashians or whatever. Well, I mean, those girls all do surgeries. When you're looking at the Kardashians and Jenners, look at their before and afters, if you don't believe me, of before they were famous. They look nothing like they did. Their bodies have completely morphed. So don't ever compare that because that's not even something that exists without surgery. So make sure you're looking at accurate things of what your body could actually be like according to your height and kind of your structure. And then get an accurate thing of what your goal would be of your body and say, okay, and then guess what? If you eat organic, you'll get there. If you do what I'm saying and you'll be surprised, you'll be like, I never thought I could. And you'll look better than you did in high school. I look better than I did in high school. Except for, okay, I was younger, so that part you might... But I mean, the body is better than I had in high school. I did not have a very good body in high school because I had started eating disorders very young. And I actually was a vegan in high school, which vegan diets tend to make you fatter because as I've said before, they have a high sugar diet there. Even if you think you're doing the protein, it's still higher sugar than you think. And most of the artificial stuff, your brain's gonna treat as sugar anyways. So you're not gonna be getting the protein that you think. And protein is where you really uh, lose weight. You have to do a high protein diet. The bottom of the line, that bottom, bottom, did I say no? <laughs> the end of the line, end of the line, um, you have to uh, eat high protein if you want to lose weight. And uh, high protein from real animal sources um, because other proteins, unfortunately, the ratio of protein to carbs to fat is not as good as meat. Regular meat has like zero carbs to a large portion of protein and then whatever fat they have. Whereas all of the vegan and vegetarian options have quite a bit of carbs to their protein ratio. There's, I don't think there's any that are at zero. And if it is at zero, then is it artificial? Because that's your other thing. If it's an artificial protein and it's at zero carbs and a bunch of protein, well, like I said, if it's artificial, your brain is not going to really know what it is, so it will treat it as sugar, even though you think you're getting all protein. It'll be like, what is this? Let me produce more insulin. So how it treats it as sugar is it produces more insulin. You say, oh, well, I did get the protein. Yes, you did get the protein. But in the process, your body produces a bunch of insulin because it thought it was getting more sugar. Um, because it didn't understand that, what is that? saying it's protein, you're saying it's protein, but it looks like sugar to me. So even though it got some of the protein, because you did consume protein, but then your body treated it as if it was sugar, so it started the insulin process as if you got 10 grams of sugar instead of maybe you thought you only got like three. Because let's say you had three grams of sugar to seven grams of protein, your body thought you got 10 grams of sugar. So that's where you can really quick put on weight with a vegan and vegetarian diet. And that's what I did in high school. And then I also was doing eating disorders. So I 
did vegan and vegetarian during eating disorders. Like I first started out being anorexic and then moved into so those all kind of go together and a lot of people right now are struggling with the vegans are becoming bulimic because a vegan diet is so high in sugar that you will gain weight and people love the diet because they like that they're not eating animals they feel really good about that and a lot of people um <coughs> excuse me have become a part of PETA um and they uh have labeled themselves now as vegans a lot of these celebrities like Miley Cyrus is a vegan um I, I just heard Kim Kardashian come out about being a vegan um uh, I think Michael Front is a vegan. T.J. Lavin and his wife are vegans. They're local celebs here. I don't know if you guys know him. Um, who else did I hear the other day? Uh, so a lot of people you'll hear coming out of these celebs will say they're vegans. But oh, Ariana Grande I think is vegan, and all these ones that I was already questioning if they're bulimic. Well, here's the deal: you can be vegan and bulimic, because all vegan is is you don't eat animal products but then you can still throw up. So I did both those. So people think, oh, they're vegan, so they're healthy. No, you can be a vegan bulimic. And that's very, very common. Very common because it's such a high sugar diet that often you'll start packing on the weight. And bulimics uh, live on high sugar diets because like I said, when you're uh, bulimic, you're really, really hungry after you throw up. So you constantly go for sugar options. Like you just go for sugar because you want that instant sugar and then, pff, and then you get rid of it. And it's just that you're sugarholics. And same with people that are obese. Anyone that is obese is a sugarholic. That's the bottom line. If you are overweight, you are a sugarholic. And you think, no, I'm not because I don't. But you are whether you realize it or not. And it might be coming in the form of... Um, the caffeine, which is making your body, your blood sugar rise. So you're an alcoholic for that feeling of that blood sugar rise, even if you're not eating the sugar. Um, you're uh, you're so addicted to that, you know, ooh, I want that boost. And that's why most people do the caffeine, because they want that boost, especially to get out of bed. I know the first thing I used to do is make a cup of coffee. Uh, make a whole pot of coffee, I should say, and have a cup of coffee. But uh, we were all about too. We got like that. We got one of those. Oh God, what are they called? Uh, Shabar. So I can't remember. They're these really cool. Um, they're more like a French thing where you you drip the coffee over, and it's just this glass like vase. There and they have this wood around the thing. I can't remember the brand. It's a C H something. Um, but it's really cool, and you just pour the coffee over. It has like a filter, and that's how you do it. And it's like this. It makes for, um, like, I thought it was the best coffee, and I would I was doing that, like, 10, co 10 pots a day sometimes. That's all I drank was coffee. I didn't even drink water. I just drank coffee, which also dehydrates you. For every cup of coffee, you should be drinking two cups, two glasses of water, but most people aren't doing that, and all they're doing is constantly dehydrating themselves. So we only drink water, water and sparkling water. So we are never drinking other substances that then just dehydrate us and go right into our bloodstream and are just... Beverages are one of your huge culprits for your weight because it's going straight into your bloodstream, you don't realize. So um, smoothies, protein shakes, uh, juice, sodas, even Diet Cokes. Those don't count. Everyone thinks that you can just have all these free... There's free calories, free anything. You can drink Diet Cokes... The problem is that artificial sweetener, your brain is going to think is sugar, so it's going to produce all that insulin, but you're not actually getting sugar, so now you're creating even more havoc. Because now you're going to have all this insulin production without sugar. So then you're like really out of whack. And that's what's happening to most people when they're doing all the artificial. Anyways, is there much of you out there? You guys, I got to get to Walmart today. I got to see if they have beef. So they only had, you know, I got some a couple days ago. But we go through a lot, so I gotta get up there. Um, and then I got paid rent today. So I was able to work, so we were able to get part of rent. They're letting us pay partial payments now, which is nice. They normally, you had to pay it all in full or they didn't accept it at all. Like they just would say full payment or, or take a late fee kind of thing. Now, at, since the economy's in the toilet here, they're accepting like you can even just pay day to day. But the issue is um, you get like a $5 uh, charge on your card 
every time you pay. So you don't want to do it every day because then you'll be paying five to five dollars extra every day. So I'm trying to do it like two. So I'm gonna pay part today and then part on Monday. But yeah, it's getting crazy around here. You know, people are having to. They're even allowing us to not pay. But I'm trying to not get in too much debt because everyone is saying, "Oh, don't pay and deal with it." Oh yeah, you'll be shocked how quickly your bills can pile up if you don't pay them too. And you think, "Oh, I'll just deal with it." No, I didn't. You take all your one month of bills and then two months of them and then three months of them you'll be in a poor house real fast so we're trying to really really stay up on our stuff by every means necessary you know we're getting creative making videos doing all kinds of stuff um, I'm reaching out to a lot of different people and making you know custom videos for people and things and then I'm um, of course working locally so that's really cool I've been able to see a bunch of locals thank goodness because I didn't know what we were gonna do when they first shut down all the hotels so it's all kind of working out for us very very uh, difficult <laughs> you know like I'm having to walk everywhere to save money or a bus I can jump on the bus but often I miss it but I, I'm not Ubering anywhere because we don't have a car Uber is out the window that is way too expensive right now so I mean and the bus is free right now which I would be walking to save the five dollars but they did make the bus free so when it, when I catch it on time I do take the bus so that's nice because they made it free but if it was five dollars I'd say forget it because we're we're counting pennies to that level you know every every dollar um, and uh, we're not buying anything extra we're only buying um, what we need for you know the day day or two um, and then we're dealing with <laughs> the next two days then you know I mean we literally have what we have well, right now I have enough money to pay a little bit of our week's rent and to buy food today and then we are at zero dollars like we are at zero dollars people don't really know no, no, we, there's no other, like, that's how we live. People, oh, there's no savings. There's no credit cards. The, if we don't end up getting, we just start selling things. That's our only other option. Like, we can put things, we can pawn, you can pawn loan, or you can straight up just pawn it and get the money. But pawn loan, then you, you know, that's a little bit of a credit because you can go pick up your stuff later. But that gets hard because... You, it, things is you know you, it gets you they only give you a certain amount of time then you got to go get it or you lose it and when you do a pawn loan they give you less than what they would uh, give you if you sold it so if you don't pick it up you actually get screwed over because they didn't give you near what they would have bought it from you that's kind of the deal they're giving you credit but they only give you so much and then if you don't pick it up you get three months then they own it so we have a couple of things in pawn already but we're hoping to not have to do more. But yeah, the, we, that's the way we live as Jedi. We're all about minimalism. But this was a little bit more than we had wanted. <laughs> but having Vegas shut down. But we're, we're making it through. Because we live in a cave, as you all some know from um, Periscope. Um, we live in a cave for three months. In uh, the, November 2017 to um, the end of February 2018. So that's why I get all confused with some of these because there's so much stuff has happened in the last couple of years that I'm like, they all jumbled together. But we lived in the cave. Some of the people know we scoped every day. Um, but that account got taken down because I was dancing sexy. We've got so many accounts for me dancing sexy or um, music violations and copyrights because you know you can't use other people's music. But they'll allow you to put it up, but then years later they'll take down your account, like on Twitter. So you don't know that you can't use it until they take it out on your account. You know, oh, great. Because some artists do let you use their music. So it's not like, oh, you should just... And it's very hard to make videos without any music that can be very boring. So most people that create music, like our um, videos on YouTube, put some sort of background music. Well, you got to be very careful because some artists allow it uh, all across the board. And those artists are the coolest. Some artists allow you to do covers. Some artists allow you to actually use their, their music. Some artists don't allow you to even cover their song. They don't allow anything. You can't cover their song. You can't play their song. You can't, you know, guitar their song. You can't do nothing. If their song is on there, they will take down your account. And other artists, if their song's on there, all they ask for is for you to pay them if you make any money. But so every artist is different. And you can find out from YouTube's standards but every app is different, and Twitter has different ones than YouTube, but they don't. there's nowhere that you can check for Twitter. 
So we do a little bit by checking with YouTube so you can get a feel for if that artist is cool with you using their music or not. But um, you, there isn't actually a check for Twitter. So you sometimes all right, put it up there and then you find out. So we've lost a lot of accounts that way and then also for sexuality. So I always push it for being too sexy. Like, like the outfits are too sexy. Which, like I said in the past, I never felt comfortable with myself, so now I do, so I do that. But, um, anyway, so I'm going to get off here. I got to put some chapstick on. It's getting so dry here in Vegas. We, we got this great, um, we get our chapstick. It's from Canna Hemp, so it's got CBDs in it. So I got to put that on today. But Vegas is so dry. <laughs> That's one thing I, I miss about California. It's, it's so dry here. It's like, but I do like Vegas now. I've gotten pretty used to it. But, Joe Richard, you around? I don't think he's out. I'm just gonna have to stop this. I don't know. I think he's still outside. But I'm getting tired, you guys. Okay, I need to make. Oh, you know what? Actually, I need to go to the store. I don't have any food. I have to go. That's right. I'm out of beef. I gotta go to Walmart.